Jay here. Today I'd like to show you step-by-step -step guide how I made this Outrun style shot in Photoshop. If you like my work and would like to see more, feel free to like and subscribe for more updates. Anyways, let's not waste any time and just jump straight into the tutorial. So the tools that I'm going to be using for this tutorial is Nick Collection plugins that were released by Google back in 2003 to 2015 and Photoshop version 20 which is from 2018 because it's the last one that's compatible with the older Google plugins. Now don't get me wrong if you have the free plugins from the Google from back in the days they still work on the latest versions of the Photoshop but the problem is any time of the latest CC edition that comes out you constantly have to basically reinstall them onto your Photoshop which is a bit of a hassle so I just prefer to stay with the older version for now. I personally edit RAW format files, so when you open them in Photoshop, they automatically open in Camera RAW Filter. Their temperature and tint setting is like a background for my image colour choice. While vibrance and saturation make those colours pop more and make them look like something out of a comic book. Other settings are good to try out to see if they add any minor adjustments to your image, but they're more personal preference than something important for this editing step. When you're finished, make sure you click Open Image and Not Done button, or it will save your image and close it all together from Photoshop. It happens to me from time to time, so I thought I'd give you guys a little disclaimer about it, because it does get confusing sometimes. If you're working with JPEG files, you can access Camera Raw Filters in Filter tab, just like you can see in here. But it has Open Image and Done button replaced by OK and Cancel, which is the only difference from opening a RAW file format in this filter pack. I wasn't 100% happy with the angle of lines in my shot, so I used Straighten Tool under Crop Edit to straighten it a bit more to my liking. Next, I cropped the image and copied it as the left hand side of the image I will create. When it comes to putting everything together, I prefer to use a bigger artboard, preferably square in size. For this edit, I made it 5000 by 5000 pixels, which is slightly bigger than the longest edge of the left hand element that we're going to be using for this edit. Then I selected the left hand side of the element that we have cropped and basically copied and pasted it onto the new artboard. Next, I opened the cropped image window and I use image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontally to create right hand side of the image and I copy and paste it onto the artboard we're working on. This can be a bit tedious, so I suggest you use Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus to zoom in and out to make sure you align it well, because sometimes something could look okay from the distance, but when you zoom in, it just doesn't align well. Then I crop the excess area around with the crop tool, so we have a neat image without any white borders around. Sometimes you might see the line between the two sides that actually isn't here. I think it has something to do with the two sides being two layers. So I select the two layers, right click and select merge layers and this line disappears. Next step is a bit tedious and optional. I use spot heal and brush to clean up some areas to give it a bit of a non-mirrored look. I find if two sides are completely identical it could take away from the image. I'll speed up this step as it's fairly repetitive and once you know how to use this tool it's fairly straightforward. If you would like to copy certain areas, you can use Clone Stamp Tool, so instead of correcting the area like Spot Healing Tool does, this tool pretty much copies and pastes from certain area in your image that you select yourself with the mouse. Now I do a little bit more cleaning and I'll fast forward this video just to speed up the process. Next, I will duplicate this layer so I have a backup layer in case I need to get back to the original edit for reference 
or sometimes you might just want to delete the layer and start from one step back which is also pretty handy so never forget to create copies whenever you can because this does come up to be a lifesaver sometimes when you edit in adjustment tab to your right I select selective color tool to edit some colors in this shot that I'm not 100% happy with like these bricks that stand out like a sore thumb and are a bit of a reddish color so I selected red color in selective color tool and adjusted it by eye to my liking I can also adjust tones of the colors too to get my desired color shades like I do here with yellow and blue tones in this image. To use Nick Collection plugins with all of these amendments I select color layers and layer copy underneath and merge them together because if I don't do this step then the Nick Collection is going to be selecting the color adjustment layer and it will not let me edit the image underneath so unfortunately it's a destructive step but you do have to merge them together to be able to use the Nick plugins. Next I go back to the filter tab again and select camera raw filters to do slight adjustments in vibrance and saturation as I'd like the colors to pop a little bit more. And now finally we can go into the Nick collection filters which is found on the bottom of the filter tab. For this edit I felt like Analog Effects Pro 2 had the preset that worked for me and bear in mind I know this because I edited this image before but sometimes it's a bit of a trial and error just to try out to see which tool works the best for which shot. The preset that really worked for this shot was Classic Camera 5 but I felt like it needed some minor adjustments to tailor it to this shot. So as you can see, you can select your presets on the left hand side and then you can go and adjust some of the adjustments on the right hand side. When you're finished with all of the adjustments in the Nick collection, click OK and it will create a new layer in your layers tab with all the adjustments that you did in the Nick collection plugin. And we're almost done. Personally, I felt like my image needed adjustment of the brightness and contrast. So I selected the tool on the right hand side just above your layers and tweak them a little bit until I was happy with the image. And there you have it, you got yourself a photo that has that outro cyberpunk feel to it, but it's actually not a digital painting, but actually a photo that you guys took yourself. If you have any questions regarding following tutorial, please feel free to comment down below. If you like my editing style and you'd like to see more epic edits like this one, please check out my Instagram. I'll leave the link for my Instagram page down below in the description tab. Thanks for watching guys!